Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We are working through every company in the S&P 500 and today is Automatic Data Processing Incorporated, ticker ADP. Over the next five minutes, I'll discuss both the valuation of this company and my thoughts on business quality. Let's dive on in. First piece we look at here on QuickFS is industry IT services. Let's look at the business description to kind of understand what this business does. So ADP provides cloud-based human capital management solutions. So it's employer services, professional employer organization. So it sounds like cloud-based HR platforms. Um, they also provide payroll and benefits management, those sorts of solutions. So it tells us a little bit about, you might have some lock-in when you have some companies. You might be able to grow your sales automatically with companies as they grow. Sounds like a pretty high quality business from what we see here, especially when you think about payroll. So intimately tied in with how a business works that you could really lock in your customers. And I would assume that's why we see some very good return on invested capital numbers. The first thing I notice with this is you have 20 straight years of profits. Every single year over the last 20 years is profitable. That's what you mean with all these positive return on invested capital numbers. In addition, it looks like the lowest year on here was 2004 with a 17% in return on invested capital, which is just amazing. This is top tier, top quartile performance, um, maybe top t top 5% performance here. Among all companies, when you have return on invested capital and you're low for the last two decades at 17% and your highs at 31%, you basically have been above 20% since 2015 and really only dipped there. You're basically running steady above 20% with this business and fairly stable returns. It's not fluctuating a lot year to year. I really like what I see here. Very high indicator of a high quality business. When we look at 10 year median returns, you see that return on assets 4.6%, return on equity 37%, an amazing number. Return on invested capital 27%. So all of this tells me high quality business. I'm really excited about this as we keep diving in. The first thing that lends me caution is valuation. So this PE ratio of 33 means you have an earnings yield of about 3%. If you're looking for returns in the 10% plus range, you're going to need growth to justify it. So you have returns on equity, so you should have the cash flow to fund your growth. You should be able to internally fund all your growth, but you need that growth to justify this valuation. When we look at your 10-year CAGRs, you see revenue is not growing very quickly. It's growing at 4.6%. However, importantly, it is growing faster than assets. So the fact that your revenue is growing faster than assets is showing us that you're going to have these improving returns on capital over time. So it's matching up with what we see here. Everything matches up here. Now, because you're growing revenue faster than assets, you're going to grow free cash flow and EPS even faster than revenue. So it's a good sign that you have some operating leverage here. Now, I'm guessing that this discrepancy between free cash flow and revenue and earnings per share, that 9% EPS growth, is probably driven by buybacks, but we'll have to dig into it a little further there. One thing we see here is you have pretty strong gross profit margins um, in the 38% range, but what I really like is that they're stable. They're not fluctuating a lot. They never go above 40%. They never go below 38%. Very stable gross profit margins show that you have a higher quality business. Again, I like everything I see right there. If you're enjoying this video so far, hit that like button on this video and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you get notifications as I upload new videos. So let's look at the income statement. And the first thing we can see is that yes, there are buybacks. So if you look down here at the shares outstanding, they've been steadily buying back stock year after year after year. And so you're having the shares outstanding go down over time. That's why your EPS is growing faster than your free cash flow. You love to see that when you invest in a business. Um, no big surprises on the income statement page besides that. Now let's look at the balance sheet. Now, one thing you're going to see here that I find really interesting is you're like your PP&E, property, plant, and equipment, is very stable. It's gone up very little over the course of the decade. It's gone up maybe $400 million. And if we look at the size, you know, this is a $97 billion business. It's, it's almost negligible for the business here. A lot of your assets are these other current assets. Maybe these are leases. Um, you have goodwill here that's not really going up. So it's very stable, strong business. In addition, you have very little debt. Long-term debt is at $2 billion, $3 billion here. Very little liabilities um, besides these other current liabilities, which I'm assuming, again, are leases if we were to dive deeper into them. Or they're maybe deferred. Well, you have deferred revenue here. So everything looks really good, especially when we look at this number. Let's look at total assets, you know, 48 billion, and you compare that to the income statement, you're earning, you know, that two and 8.8% um, 
you're earning a very high return there on your capital, especially because your equity is really low. You're basically able to offset all your assets with liabilities, keeping your shareholders equity at that 5.6 billion. However, it's going to look a little different when you think about it in terms of a shareholder yield, which is why one of the big differences here is this price to book ratio being 22 means this return on equity is really going to get beat down because your price to book ratio is throwing that off. You have a very large asset base um, and it's just because you have low invested equity. Now, when we go to the cash flow statement, we can learn a little bit more about the business. You see 10 straight years of free cash of positive cash flow from operations, all a very good sign. You do see stock-based compensation. They do pay their, their employees with stock, but every single year for the last 10 years, they have bought back more shares than they have diluted, which is why we're seeing that dilution that those shares outstanding decline over time. Relatively limited issuance of debt over the course of the decade and cash paid for dividends has been growing each year. So they're paying about equal amounts in dividends versus um, buybacks over time. So you're getting half your yield from dividends, half your yield from buybacks, and then you're getting that growth. So you really like what you see there. This is a good sign. So the tough part's really gonna come back from valuation. Everything I like in this company tells me it's a high quality business. These return on invested capital numbers are amazing, top tier absolutely top tier. I love what I see from ADP here. This business description tells you it's your locked in customers. You're probably able to raise prices. You're not having to use a lot of assets. You're really leveraging the potential of this business to give you high returns. That's why you see these returns on equity and return on invested capital. So everything's good there. What it comes down to with this business is valuation. This company is clearly going on my watch list because of the business quality. Absolutely amazing business quality. However, you need to get the valuation right. Is this valuation right? Well, maybe. It could be this is you know a top end of fair value if they continue to reliably always grow EPS at 7%. You have a 3% free cash earnings yield when you buy it. 3% plus 7% can get you to about that 10% rate of return, which I think is a minimum hurdle rate. Now, there's some uncertainty there because you need to sustain EPS growing faster than revenue over time, which is hard to do over the long term. They've done it over the last 10 years, but could they continue to do it for... 30 years, it's it's hard to say. So I'd be a lot more comfortable with EPE of like a 20. That gives you a free cash flow yield of about 5%. And then you can combine that 5% with a 6% growth here or 4.6 growth here in revenue. And you can really start to see an easy path to your double digit returns. So what's hard with the current valuation is I don't see an easy path to double digit returns. It's possible. You might be at the very, very high end of fair value, but the low end of fair value is probably in that PE of 20 range. Now, undervalued where I'd like to buy would still be that PE of about 15. But with the quality of this business, it would surprise me if you actually get there. But that's what you'd want to think about. This company's probably a little overvalued. It would deserve to sit on a watch list until maybe you get a more attractive valuation. Again, thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please hit that like button and please subscribe to the channel so you can get more great investing videos as I upload them about new companies every week. Thank you for listening. Until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.